everybody, it's James here from GoodGuitarist.com and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play Hand in My Pocket by Alanis Morissette. And this lesson is actually about using that song as a vessel for learning to play bar chords. You know, we're taking a step between regular chords and bar chords using this other shape that this song actually uses that you know, helps you get into the right positioning and all that stuff. If you're looking for a really easy way to play this song, I already have a lesson for that. I'll put a link down below for that one. And if by the end of this lesson, you found that you really enjoyed this method, this is exactly what we do in my course, Bar Chords Made Easy. I basically just show you how to prepare for bar chords, how to build up that finger strength. And by the end of it, you learn how to play bar chords in any key all along the fretboard. You know, it's, it's really complete and really gets you there, but it has such an easy curve at the beginning. You know, you just kind of gradually get up. It's not like straight into bar chords. I spend a lot of time preparing. So if you like this method, I do recommend checking that out, taking the free trial. We start off with a really simple chord shape, the E chord, and you probably already know this, and you play it that way. But we're actually going to play it using these three fingers. And there's a reason for that that you'll find out why really soon, but for now, let's just practice that. We have our middle finger on the first fret of the G string, pinky finger on the second fret of D, and our ring finger on the second fret of A. It's the same chord, we're pressing down the same spots, just using different fingers. And this is the only shape that we need for the entire song. What we're going to do is we're going to drag this shape up until our middle finger is at the sixth fret, and these two fingers are on the seventh fret, and then we're going to touch the tip of our index finger, of our first finger, to the fifth fret of the low string. And this is kind of a bar chord. The only thing is we're not flattening this finger out and pressing all the strings. We're just using the tip of it. But this is getting us in the same position. It's getting our wrist in a good position. Check your thumb. Make sure that your thumb lines up with your middle finger. If your thumb is over to the side like that or like that, it's going to hurt your wrist. And just try it out. So we have this, our first finger is at the 5th fret, and then we're going to slide this shape up until our first finger is at the 10th fret. And you basically want to use your first finger as the guide for all of this. This is the leader, these are the followers. So this finger, if I said go to the 7th fret, you know, you just move the whole shape, and you just have to keep an eye on what fret your first finger's on. The rest of them will follow. And those are all the shapes we have. 5th fret, 10th fret, 7th fret, and then the E chord. So it's just four positions. We'll go over it one more time. Open, 5th, 7th, 10th. So all we got to do is take our E shape and just drag it around and pay attention to what fret our first finger is touching. And now we're going to practice putting these in the right order. And in the tab at the top of the screen, I'm going to put which fret your finger should be touching in brackets beside the chord shape. So it'll say A and then have five in brackets. And that five means that your first finger is on the fifth fret. And let's just practice putting these chords in order. It starts off with a lot of E. So, you know, let's hang on in there. Do this nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Um, And when you're sliding all the way up to the 10th fret, you can get a lot of squeaks. You know, it's, it's a bit much, so... If you just lift your fingers a little bit, it's a lot less noticeable. 
Anyways, once you have that down, once you can play the chords in order and this hand is doing its job, it's time to figure out what to do with our rhythm hand. This is what it sounds like. I'll do it a lot slower. Three and four. And when we break that down, it's a lot simpler than it looks. It starts off with two root strums, and that's just where you're aiming for the lower notes of the chord. You know, and um, it's kind of like a bass drum. You're like, and that's how this starts off. It's just going root, root, and then a full down stroke. One, two, three, and then at the end we go four. And so we do a low strum, a root strum once again, and then on an upstroke we just aim for the second string. And that might be tough. You could just aim for the top two strings, but it sounds a lot more like the original recording when you just get that second string. So all in all, really slowly, root, root, down, root, up. And on that last root, you really gotta like launch your pick over. So you can do that. If you're using your hand, it's not that hard actually, you just, you just you know, use your thumb to get the root and then just pluck it with the finger. It's a lot easier with your hand actually. Anyways, take your time with that, count it out if you need to. You can count it out going one and two and three and four and over and over again. One and two and three and four and going as slowly as you need to but make sure it's steady you know the counting has to keep going you can't be like one and two and three and four and you know you want the counting to be steady so slow it down as much as you need to that's the trick to getting better is going as slow as you need to to do it perfectly and then you just gradually speed it up once you can do it perfectly but if you're trying to do it full blast or even like at a medium speed and you just keep doing it kind of wrong you're just going to remember or memorize how to do it kind of wrong kind of right you know whereas if you do it perfectly slowly and speed it up that's how you get anywhere with anything doesn't that doesn't just apply to guitar and you don't have to aim for that second string you could do this strumming pattern just in a really simple way just going root root down down up and it sounds fine You know, it doesn't sound exactly like the recording, but it sounds close. So that's fine. If you need to focus on the chords more and, and this little picking the second string thing isn't working out, don't worry about it. You can still play the song. Anyways, um, once you take a moment with that pattern, you know, try it on all the chord shapes. You can just... Once you do that, we can put it together with the chord progression and that's the whole song. So let's try that super duper slowly, starting off on that E chord. One, two, three, four. So that's all there is to it. If you want to play along with the original recording, you have to put a capo on the third fret and kind of just add three to everything. So if I say, you know, go up to the 10th fret, you really have to go up to the 13th fret, you know, just push everything up three frets. But the cool thing about that is that 
it's proven that variation helps you learn things. So if you try, say there's a song you're having trouble with, putting a capo, you know, just a couple frets up, forces your brain to kind of look at it in a slightly different perspective, and it helps you learn it even better. So that will really help you out with this one. Um, and practicing with the original recording is like the best way to learn how to play through a whole song and all these things, you know, there's somebody singing for you, you get to play with professional musicians in a way you know even though they're on a recording you're still playing with them so i really recommend that and if you like this style of learning and you want to learn more songs this way and learn you know how to kind of gradually go from where you're at to being able to play bar chords solidly any key all along the fretboard i do recommend checking out the free trial for my course bar chords made easy otherwise have a fun time practicing and i'll see you soon